Hello, everyone. Hi. And welcome back to the Joe and Jillian podcast. Yeah. We talk about Joe and Jillian things and yeah. the other things. It's just us this week. Just us this week. It's a little underwhelming after the Debbie machine. That's quite a high to yeah. a low. Can't follow her up. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Texture. Texture is a way to read magazines without the magazines. It's pretty incredible. It's an app. It's a service you can get on your computer. And basically, you pay a subscription and you get tons and tons of magazines at your fingertips. They're on your device. You can save them for offline reading. It's really great. I'm telling you, Texture is the future of magazines. Go to texture.com slash Jenna Jillian right now and get your free trial. Test it out for free. It's also brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies. Me Undies. The most comfortable underwear in the world and also the best looking. Check it out with MeUndies.com slash Jenna Jillian. 20% off your first order and... And if you order by December 13th, it'll be here by Christmas. So thank you to our sponsors. More on that later. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. So. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I had the idea that we should really talk about this Sam Pepper issue. So for those of you that like our funny, lighthearted conversations, this probably isn't the one for you. Um, But for those of you that don't know who Sam Pepper is, uh, a quick Google search, I think, will clarify who we're talking about. He's a former Big Brother contestant. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and he's also a YouTuber oh now. Yeah, and, now uh, he's a YouTuber. He's become quite controversial in his last yeah, couple he, of videos. Well, he, I think the most controversial of which is that he makes prank videos. So sometimes the nature of those is that people just try and one-up themselves and a lot of them are fake. Um, but he was also seriously accused by multiple young women of either raping them that, that were, he got accused of that a few times, sexually assaulting them or harassing them. And, uh, many of the young girls were underage and he was trying to get them to send nude pictures, um, just all around sort of acting really inappropriate. Um, he's been in the news as of recently, because he posted a prank called uh, "Murdering My Best," murdering your best friend prank. What something, was it called? Something like that. Killing best friend. Prank. Yeah. So he collaborated with a couple of viners, and they were best friends from Kansas. And uh, he pretended to kidnap and murder one of them in front of the other one. And the internet is pretty pissed off at Sam Pepper right now. Yeah. Um, keep in mind. That we, uh, this isn't one of those podcasts where we sat down beforehand and wrote out all our thoughts. This is completely off the, off the cuff. We're just <laughs> talking right now. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's a, it, two days ago about it came out. Yeah. Uh, news sites have been talking about it. There's been, I mean, on, on YouTube itself, you, you can't go on YouTube without seeing it right now. Everyone's making their reaction video and, and whatnot. Um, although I, I roll my eyes at that, but not at H3H2 Productions. That's what he does best. And he absolutely did a great job on that. I roll my eyes at that because, you know, you see something like this happen and then every YouTuber, you know, turns on their camera and reacts and says the same exact thing. But in a sense, it, it, sorry, I'm kind of deviating right away, but it's a little frustrating just, just to see, um, you know, all these people who are so disgusted and so put off by the way Sam Pepper acts and this prank and how distasteful it is, but they're not, they're not hesitating more than a second to cash in on it. And I only say that because these reaction videos, like they can, they can react the same way, just not make a video out of it because Mm -hmm. you're, all you're doing is giving him more publicity. All you're doing is feeding the troll of Sam Pepper right now. Um, and like I said, there are a few exceptions to this. Um, H3 H3 production being one of them, but I don't know if you saw, you know, on YouTube, but you Google Sam Pepper and it's, or you search Sam Pepper and it's just my reaction to Sam Pepper. I did not oh, see it's that. Just, it's, it's, it's a lot like the, you know, his last prank, the last controversial prank, the one where he touched he, girls. Yeah. So he had a fake hand and he was asking girls for directions. And then with his real hand, it was hidden in his sweatshirt. Yeah, like, he would like grope their butts yeah. when they turned around. And that had people up in arms, but the same thing. And I'm just talking about something small that I thought of. Uh, yeah, that, I did that not bugs see me. that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just one of those things where it's like, well, well, what is it? You know, are you disgusted and you don't want this guy to succeed or you want to use it to, you know, fuel a video? Yeah, I can understand if somebody outside of the reaction world, so we're talking about H3H3, that's literally his channel. He reacts to really problematic people in a hysterical way. 
Um, but for people that are just making a reaction video, why not just sit and, you know, make a rant or tell your thoughts about it? Why, yeah, yeah. Why do, why or, you, or wait a day. Wait, yeah, wait 24 day. hours wait 24 and see if you're still so steaming uh, enough to make a video about it. And I, I don't even think, you know, they're so steaming or angry about it. They're just like, well, I could put this up now. A lot of people will watch it. Yeah. Well, you know? it seems like there are some people on YouTube that try and do – something whenever it is most you know topical yeah. when it's at the height of its you know controversialness that they feel the need to react on it as quickly as possible yeah. Yeah. i mean in essence yeah it is capitalizing off of it yeah. um i did not realize that people were doing that many reactions videos to it but you know the first time around when this happened with sam i think the the actual yeah so the first time it happened was that prank to which then he made a part 2 and a part 3 which was him finally Basically revealing yeah. the third part of the prank, which was, uh, you know, thousands of men get abused every year, which you know, clearly was just like an afterthought. He was trying to dig his way out of this hole without having to admit any fault or apologize. But what I think is interesting is several people, Philip DeFranco, as always, has a completely level-headed response to this stuff. And my first reaction... He's an exception as well, yeah, obviously. My first reaction was the same as Phil DeFranco's. I went on Twitter. I saw that Sam Pepper was trending. And the first thing that came to my mind was like, oh, God, here we fucking go. Like, yeah. he's going to be doing really inappropriate shit with girls. You know, maybe hopefully he got caught or something. Something. Uh, no, it's a I murdered my best friend prank. And yeah. I was like, well, you know what? This is a small win because at least he's not, like, harassing any women, which I think is a win. So props to you. <laughs> That's <laughs> that, true. That's that a good point. That was honestly what I thought. I was like, oh, it's just, a you know, a ridiculous prank that is horribly insensitive and not right. But, like, at least he's not... At least he might have grown a little bit from when he got, or at least he didn't, last or at time. least he didn't one up it. You know, like I saw a tweet right, that said, yeah. "This last prank of Sam Pepper's didn't change my opinion of him at all." So it's like you thought he was scum; he's still scum. It's not. You yeah. know, I'm just he didn't. Like, I don't think that him posting this, from all of our knowledge, made him appear any worse. It, um, it just is so predictable at this point that he, you know, has no boundaries yeah. in terms of what's well, right or wrong. I, I mean, I don't know about I. I think in a in a certain way it made him appear worse. Mm. Um, and the reason I think that is it's just simply because of the timing. The whole ISIS theme of the right. video, the, it just it's horrible taste. Yeah. And to I do listened that right to now. Uh, Keemstar's interview with them, and they you know swore up and down that it's just a prank. That they knew their friends, they knew their limits, and they were really just doing this and really didn't think it would be a big deal. Yeah, they didn't think about the ISIS implications or, or but, Paris or any of that. I think it, that speaks to who they are as people is that they're living inside of their bubbles without ever questioning themselves. Like, Hey, is maybe now a bad time to upload a video? Yeah. Like this? So, you know, yes, yes. It didn't involve him, you know, one upping his, his actions with women and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, this, this didn't, this didn't keep him steady. This, no. this absolutely knocked him down a peg, I think. And you know, the, the re the reason this is such a big deal right now, I think, Partly is because of the theme of the video mm. and the time that is now and mm -hmm. the things going on in the world. And it's like, yeah, he's young and he's kind of maybe naive to not think about that before posting this video. But that bit of, you know, naivete is, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal in this situation. So, um, you know, I, I would say if, if it weren't so, themed that way if the if the video didn't strike such a chord with a lot of people uh in that sense it it would still be in bad taste but it wouldn't be this big of a deal i don't think you and know? yes i agree 100 percent. and i think that you know as phil franco pointed out and a lot of people have pointed out you take other people that do pranks that you know in some area are much worse than this have gone much farther than this like roman atwood had recently posted that video yeah. of pretending to blow his kid up yeah, no, and it's... you know it it dances along this line of really like okay what are we doing to entertain people and what are we just doing to sort of exploit people's fears and clickbait them into watching this you know is this really a prank who's getting pranked here is this funny what what am i contributing to the world by doing yeah, this yeah. and 
I think that, yes, if someone else had posted this same video, there would be less of a reaction than there is now. But because it is Sam Pepper, people and because, were ready to attack him. Because he has done so many controversial things in the past, I think it just comes from people's like tiredness of him doing inappropriate things on the internet, which this was the main reason I wanted to talk about this today, is because the YouTube community, or YouTube in general, they Sam had cross checked with them that this doesn't violate any of the terms of the guidelines. Yeah, it did. And yeah. they have no reason to take the video down mm. because people were very adamant that he should take it down. Mm. And then there were, you know, a lot of big YouTubers, a lot of people that were talking about and signing the petition that said uh, Sam Pepper should have to have his channel removed mm. from YouTube. Yeah. And I think this is like a really, really dicey gray area right now for internet communities and that, you know, we all have freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Well, I mean, depending on what country you're posting from, yeah. but at least in the United States, we have freedom of speech and yeah. freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. And maybe just because you don't like something that someone else posts, if YouTube doesn't deem it, you know, bad for the community guidelines that they can't they can't find a legal ground to rip the video down it, it's sort of a it's a gray area you know who are we to be telling sam pepper like hey i'm signing this petition to get your channel taken down because who are we to say what's what's good content and what's bad content and as youtubers and people that watch youtube and people that like youtube we have to police ourselves as a community. So on one hand, you know, it is disappointing to see some bigger YouTubers being like, yeah, rip his fucking channel down. I'm I'm signing this petition. Like, fuck you, Sam Pepper. But on the other hand, the only people that are going to police what's okay and not okay to put on the internet on YouTube is ourselves. So like, I am a little bit disappointed that people are forgetting that, you know, our rights, our civil liberties are a thing and that you can't just rip someone's channel down because you don't like what they're posting. But on the other hand, I am proud of people for speaking up and being upset and being angry and policing ourselves and that we have to make boundaries of what we deem as appropriate or not appropriate. And I think this has happened with Nicole Arbor in the past and, you know, a couple of other videos here and there. But as of recently, there have been some really sort of messed up videos that get everybody really riled up. Mm. And the community all of a sudden is like, take it down. Like they shouldn't be able to post that. You can't say this stuff, but that is the price of freedom. The price of freedom is having to listen to other people's opinions, is having to know that these people like Sam Pepper can make videos and that they exist and that they really hit you in a place that you don't like. That's not right. But I'm not 100 percent sure that we should be able to strip him of that liberty, of his freedom of speech and expression. I mean, it gets into like technicalities. So when you think about, I mean, you're making really valid points, but when you think about like, you know, I checked uh, a couple hours ago. 110,000 people have signed the petition to remove his channel. Right. Well, and this just is to back, like, one second, Lacey Green, the YouTuber who does, mm -hmm. uh, like, she runs, like, a sex and all that channel, she had made a petition back when he was harassing girls and they were yeah. coming forward yeah. that had over 100,000 signatures as yeah. well. No, no, no. I'm not, yeah. This not, isn't the first petition absolutely, against him absolutely. with over 100,000 signatures on it. Um, I, I mean, Obviously, your freedom of speech, especially here, where we know that's a civil liberty, is is important, and it's you know everyone deserves it, but until they you know obviously you know, break the law or all, whatever. But I'm not I, I'm not I'm not in favor of of the video being removed. Like I don't think YouTube or anyone for that matter has the right to say I'm overriding this and I'm taking your video down because that is stifling freedom of speech. What I what I do think is fair is when enough people, both when the sexual assault, came, you know, video caused an uproar and over a hundred k signatures happen, and right now when this is causing an uproar and a hundred k hundred k plus signatures are on that petition to remove his channel, when I when I see that many people, both in the YouTube community and fans of the YouTube community, which are also part of the YouTube community and people outside of it, because you know those signatures aren't primarily, you know, they're not solely YouTube. They might be primarily YouTube, they're not solely YouTube people, but when it's that many people who are that upset 
I think it's in YouTube's not only best interest, but it's their job to step in and do something. Because there's having unpopular opinions and polarizing characters, but then there's there's Sam Pepper's recent video. Mm. And I think that there's a difference. There's not, you know, he's not just the bad guy. He's not just the guy that people like to hate watch. He's he's someone who has now crossed the line for a lot of people and have made YouTube feel a little bit disgusting, you know, when they watch this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as someone who's part of it, I feel like if YouTube just, you know, does nothing and, and this this channel is unaffected and six months later he does another crazy thing, like I don't, uh, I don't think that's right. And I don't think as, like I said, as someone who's on the platform, it makes me feel very good because then it seems like, I'm kind of like secondhandedly supporting it. Right. And, you know, you really have to fuck shit up to cross the line the way he did. And he did that. Hmm. He really crossed the line. Yeah. And no, in no world do I think that should be allowed to just like continue to happen. You know, I'm not saying take the video down, but I just don't think he should have the free reign to continue to do so. A AKA have a, a perfectly unaffected channel. Mm. No, I I wouldn't disagree with that. I and I think, you know, what I was saying earlier about the people in the community being the only ones that can police what we deem appropriate and not appropriate. I think if YouTube were to step in and say, you know, you guys have a lot of signatures on this petition, you know, maybe we should do something about this. If you take down one video that people don't like, that leaves the floodgate open for everybody. But it's not taking down one video. You like it's it's a guy who has had a second offense on massively offending people to a really uncomfortable standard, removing his channel but, or doing something to him. It's not the video. The video lives. Right. You know, the video, you can't touch the video because you're right. It's an important thing to not stifle the speech directly. You stifle the person in a way. You know, you give him uh, you, it's a privilege. I'm sorry. It's a privilege to have a YouTube channel. That's why there are strikes and that's why there are banned channels. That's what this is for. Like this guy has proven himself to not know how to properly make YouTube videos that don't piss off a hundred thousand people. But I mean, my argument to that would be there are troll channels that exist with people full of unpopular opinion puffins that literally just want to sit there and piss people off. Yeah. Those channels exist. They yeah. they have thousands more dislikes than they could ever have in likes. If somebody was just upset enough, you don't think that they could get 100,000 signatures to get every single video or YouTube channel pulled off the internet where those exist. And now you're really like bordering the the First Amendment. You can't take here's, that away from people. Here's how I see the well, what, difference. What would you want YouTube to do to Sam Pepper? Hold on. Let me respond first because here's how I see the difference okay. in those two th situations. The difference is Sam Pepper has millions of young, mostly female, impressionable kids and teenagers. Right. He's won their fandom. Like he already has an insane following. So... When a guy like him takes that following and, you know, goes rogue and, and abuses the uh, the power he has, that's a scary thing. And I think that's what people are so upset about. It's of like course. Someone but I think in a legality sense, you, it's not on YouTube's hands. Because even if – so, for example, in the last thing happened with him harassing young girls, you know, magically his Facebook and I think Instagram got, you know, quote, hacked – but people are saying you know, he probably just deleted them because there's too much evidence in there of him just acting so inappropriately with young girls. You would see it. He didn't hide it. So if you take the platform away from the person, it doesn't change the way the person is going to act. No, but it, it, it does It does affect their reach and it does affect their power. But as someone that I, I believe he hasn't been convicted of a crime or done anything wrong according to the YouTube guidelines or Twitter's guidelines. Or Instagram or but, Facebook, it's hard legally to take any platform away from him. It's it seems like 
no matter what gets deleted of his or where he gets shuffled around because, you know, people are upset at him, he will always have, as long as he's, you know, free to do whatever he wants on the internet, he will always have access to young girls and their impressionable minds because there are people that are genuine fans of his and really like him. They will find him. So I'm not 100% sure what even taking down his channel might do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, when you ask me that question, what do you think YouTube should do? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just know that if I'm part of YouTube, like, you know, on the business side, I'm thinking this is making us look horrible. Well, I agree. Putting up with this and allowing it. I, I agree 100%. I'm not saying I know the solution, though, because no, you're right. I, it's a complicated situation. It's right. very, very complicated. Well, that's like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg stepping in at somebody's <laughs> Facebook post that has an opinion that they don't like or shows they, – they show those terrible, awful pictures of animal abuse on Facebook that you scroll through your feed and they're just there. Mm -hmm. Like they – I think that platforms have some responsibility of cleaning things up so that you can't just see – the horrific things that people post, which is why guidelines exist for different platforms. But all they can do is really adhere to what they've written there and everything else they have to let go because otherwise you're infringing on people's freedom of speech. So I was just a little bit upset when, you know, the petition was going around to remove his channel. I think it should be heavily weighed on YouTube. I think that people there... I have definitely thought about it. They're definitely thinking about it. He got dropped by his network a long time ago. I think the people within the industry have already made it very clear that we're not going to work with him or, you know, do stuff. I, don't, I can't speak for the Vine community because those two Viners were clearly willing to work with him. Hmm. But all we can do as a community is sort of socially say that this isn't acceptable, that the, we're not okay with this because we know legally there there's not a lot of grounds there. Yeah. Even with the sexual harassment prank, I think it came out that those girls were actors anyways. Wasn't it? Uh yeah, I don't I'm know. Almost I positive. just I know that no, like I know that he, you know, the second and third video were like, Oh, this was all fake, they were paid actors, but it doesn't change I mean, it doesn't change it for me. Like Right, but okay, but what I'm saying is even if that video was living, breathing proof that he was sort of harassing girls in public and somebody could arrest him on some charges for doing that. And then he says these are paid actors that, you know, negates all reason for someone to arrest him. So I don't think that you can convict him as of the current moment I'm, of a, I'm, of a crime. I'm, uh, you're right. You're right. I'm not saying you can convict him. And you know what? Maybe you do have a, maybe you, you're onto something when you say something, you know, along the lines of like the, you know, let him dig his own grave and let the YouTube community right. shun well, him. Yes. That, I, that was one of my, my, bigger ideas here within the YouTube community is that it's not our responsibility to say that someone can or can't upload content. Mm. I think it's only our responsibility to do what we can as a community, which is sort of get him the message that you can't post this and this isn't okay. And we're upset about this. And hopefully that's enough for you to grow up and move on, which clearly it's not for Sam Pepper. It's not our responsibility to make sure that his livelihood ends. It's not our job to rip his YouTube channel from him to strip him of his liberties. He needs to do that for himself by, you know, committing a crime and going to jail. Yeah. It's, I, I think what he did in this video was not a crime. Well, no, what I think I'm just realizing is that it's just unfortunate because I agree, it's disheartening. Yeah, it's it's just it's one of the situations where like you want a quick fix and you want justice, but it's it's a little more complicated than right. that. And well, think of all the people in history that have gotten away with crimes and they just continue to live their lives. Like you literally get away with fucking murder. Yeah, but and you, you want so badly for this person to get the justice but they that they deserve, but you know better that it's not your job to make them, you know, fuck up or do something wrong. They they will eventually dig their own graves and yeah. pay the price. Yeah, and, and, and what you said about the YouTube community shunning him and, like, if, if that continues to, that, you know, the scape of how YouTube react to, reacted to um, Sam Pepper, it, if, that, if that continues on the tra trajectory, like, people just hate him more and more every time he does shit like this, like, he he's going to slowly just get kind of phased out. Right. Well, that's what I think. If there was a petition going around, because it was started by a young girl, I think, who, you know, 
I imagine she was like, yeah, if I just start this, we can, let's just see how many people we can get. And hopefully maybe YouTube will rip their channel down. But maybe a 13 year old person that starts the petition doesn't really think about someone's civil liberties and how you can't just, you know, take away certain things when they're not violating any particular guideline. Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. What I think should have been circulating amongst the YouTube community is maybe a petition to never work with Sam Pepper. Yeah. To you know, sort of blacklist him from our community because it was disappointing <laughs> to see young Viners and other people collaborating with him when in theory, if we blacklist him from our community, like you're not invited to VidCon, you're not invited to events, you're not like able to work with any of us in any capacity until you clean up your channel and show that you're growing as a person. Like that's the there's, petition that should be going there's, around. There's a lot to be said for that. If if people are really that upset and then yeah. it's at well, each person's discretion you, if they'd like to sign that or not. I, I agree with you. And I think there's a lot to be said about what you just said. I think that's you know, realistically the way to go. And the well, way that's that, all that we have on. control over. Yes. It's it's realistically the way to go. It's what we have control over. And it, you know, it's it's the natural order of things in our society. That's how it has to happen, apparently. We don't know that. That's what it appears to be. Um but oh man, I just lost my train of thought. Um Yeah, I mean the the the, the, the oh here it is. Yeah, the reason like the that petition, mm -hmm. whoever started it. The fact is a lot of people signed it and I think the reason a lot of people signed it and the reason it's getting attention and all this and the reason it was even started is because people are offended, they're disgusted, this isn't the first time and they want they want a quick fix, they want um, the most – and they want somebody to do something about it. But they want they don't want to have to they don't want to be like, all right, here's a petition to slowly phase him out and everyone has to slowly get on board and never work with him and then maybe in a year or two he'll be gone. Like people want to be like, no, fuck his channel. Take it down now. They want they want immediate reaction. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that petition exists, not to say it's reasonable or even lawful. I don't know the answer to that. But I think, you know, it's justified why people acted that way. Of course you know? it is. Um but you know what you said is uh, it's it's a really good point, and uh, you know it, it really it's one of those things where it's like you know in a professional sports league if the players aren't being treated right they form a union and mm -hmm. then things are better like there really needs to be a union formed around creators to just not I mean not only Sam Pepper especially Sam Pepper but not only him like this kind of shit is not going to be someone I'm gonna in a year when people have calmed down on him collaborate with I'm just never gonna do it. It needs to be something that the big creators and then the medium creators and then the smaller creators all agree on, you know, it's, 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 it's that's what YouTube is. So, right. well, but we, yeah. then again, you know, we're, we're being open to the fact that we may be wrong. Right. You know and, what I mean? Like we don't know we, the law. We also, as people need to be open to the fact that sometimes people, you know, are kind of shitty for a time, but they can grow and learn and change as human beings because they are human beings. Yeah. I think at some point, everyone sharing things online has reached a point where maybe they shared something that they thought wasn't a big deal and it became a big deal because people were like, wait, I don't like this. Yeah. On any scale, I think that everyone has experienced that at some point. Yeah. Like yeah. It, whether it be like, oh my God, don't feed your dog that or, you know, so stupid up into very offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I think is important is that you don't like drag these people through the mud for forever, mm -hmm. which I think the internet is really good at. They, they tend and to just hold people accountable hold for something that they yeah. did. Like that vine of, you know, Nash Greer or whoever saying something inappropriate uh, about My AIDS. AIDS yeah. And, you know, Tyler Oakley dragged him. And then people were very angry at Nash. And he was like, look, I was like 13 when I posted that. I fucked up. I'm super yeah. sorry. Like, I think, no, it's, you're, you're absolutely I think right. it's important you're absolutely right. that if you ripped down Sam Pepper's video and channel or whatever he's put on the Internet... That that doesn't solve anything. But what, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And people shouldn't drag people forever. You know, people change and right. people deserve second chances and all this shit. Right. But, uh, you know, what, what about like a year suspension? Like you can't upload for a year. Like what about that? That seems like something that A, they could pull and B, would at least sort of satisfy people. Like, but hey, where, Sam. Where would you draw – like, so say you're YouTube, think about it from YouTube's perspective, because videos get flagged and just, you know, disliked. Take, for example, Justin's Be Justin Bieber's music video for Baby has over 5 million dislikes. Yeah. 
5 million dislikes. I'm pretty sure when that song came out, because of the way that people felt about Justin Bieber, you could easily get a petition with a million people that signed it that said, take this video off the internet. Yeah. If you're YouTube, where now do you draw lines and make rules as a community about who you're going to put on probation or what you're going to remove outside of their already pre-written guidelines. How would you justify taking down someone's content versus someone else's? Because I think if you're YouTube or Google, you're in a whole ton of hot water if you start subjectively just removing things from the internet because that person can t- turn around and just sue you. Well, then you're in a situation where there's a court case and that will change things and maybe that's what needs to happen. You know, Sam Pepper versus YouTube changes it. So from now on, things that happen this way will, you know, subject your channel to one year, two year, three year ban. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe it does need to go to court. But how, how, how? I I don't know if I'm YouTube. How would YouTube go about making the decision of who gets banned? Okay. What I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at the choices you get when you click flag on a video. Mm -hmm. There's sexual content, Mm -hmm. violent or repulsive content. Right. I mean, right. That's, these are reasons for flagging. Yes, yeah. flagging. And to th- it's not flagged yet. Like the video, I mean, it's not age restricted or anything. Hateful or abusive content, harmful or dangerous acts, child abuse infringes my rights, spam or misleading, uh, and then playback issue. So the, YouTube made those. Google did, created those categories. Those aren't, and they've those also, aren't the guidelines. So those are just no, I know. That's just what people flag. Absolutely. The video. Absolutely. So if, if people see a video and they think, well, this applies to that directly, like say, you know, I think that applies to that directly. YouTube has, I mean, that video has been flagged. It's got to have been flagged tens of thousands of times, and it's still up. So why are these choices here when I would look at them and say, yeah, those those are right to flag on this video, and yet somehow the video is not age-restricted? Well, let me ask you a question to play devil's advocate. If this video was flagged and taken down, why isn't Roman Atwood's blowing up my kid or age restricted flagged or taken down age or age restricted? If Sam Pepper's groping people in public video was flagged or taken down, then why aren't all those gross, well, nasty I, kissing pranks? Well, we don't, taken down? we don't know. Like, but do you see first, the, the, no, the, yes, but I'm responding. Like, we don't know a, what the tipping point is for this. Like if you're YouTube, you know, but we don't know how many flags it takes to actually flag a video. We don't know that. We also don't know how many flags each of those videos you just mentioned got. Right. Well, I believe that if people flag a video, yeah. YouTube does, when it gets enough flags, YouTube but does go eno- in there. What's enough though? I don't, I'm not sure. Because of Jenna, like the, but, you say enough flags, but, but Sam Pepper definitely got right. enough flags. No, 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 no. When you get enough flags, YouTube does go in there. So they have someone watch it yeah. and, and deem whether or not this needs to be age restricted. So just, just or getting enough flags violates, in, in and of itself doesn't necessarily right. knock a video. So like if you uploaded a video of somebody getting murdered on the street and like even five people flagged it. I'm sure at some point YouTube go, I know this, that YouTube goes in, watches the video video. and, and either deletes it or rips it down. If it it violates the community guidelines in any way, which means copyright and music, you know, if it's gratuitous, disgusting violence, or if it violates the actual guidelines, Mm -hmm. they will rip it down. Okay. And if it, if it needs to be age restricted, then they do that in that process. But just because millions of people dislike it and flag it does not necessarily mean it's going to get ripped down or age restricted. They yeah. make the decision like solely based on if it's infringing on copyright, if it's, you know, not following the guidelines mm. and that's about it. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like... <laughs> It's just, it's just a complex kind of thing. You know, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I'm not saying I thought that if enough people clicked a button, the video would automatically turn off. Mm. Like I know there's a team of people, mm. but you know, that, that literally means it's a case by case basis. You know, each video right. has a different. Well, if people are flagging something, they do have somebody that goes and checks it out, but no matter how disgusting you might find it as a person, if, if it makes you feel a certain way, if it's not violating the terms of use, yeah. you can't take it down. If it's violating the terms of, you know, being age restricted or not, they can turn that on. I mean, I think there's an argument for this video being age restricted. I certainly wouldn't want, you know, a little kid I was babysitting turning on YouTube and clicking on that. Yeah, of course. But I mean, if that's age restricted, then everything else is fucking age restricted. Not true. Not true. 
because just because a video has content that shouldn't be seen by kids mm-hmm. doesn't mean it should be age restricted. Right. I think it's it's Sam Pepper. Like it's the caliber of Sam Pepper that presents such a big problem here. Right, but because he hasn't been convicted of a crime, no, but I'm not saying I'm in, not saying you're wrong. I'm just I saying forget. that's what makes it different. No, I understand, but. Just because we know who he is as a person and what he's done in the past and been accused of in the past and him being problematic on the internet doesn't necessarily come into YouTube's decision of whether or not to leave his channel up or this video up. But what I do think is interesting and something to think about is that there have been people on YouTube that have been charged and convicted with possession of child pornography um that i forget his name i think his youtube channel name was david farms i literally just googled this before we started he had been convicted of inappropriately touching kids doing a bunch of fucked up shit in like 92 he like went to jail came out started a youtube channel aimed at children what is it aimed at children like oh like his audience is kids show got it and Unfortunately, I don't I don't know what happened to him or if he still exists. I don't have that much time to Google it. Please Google it if you're interested in it and let me know what happened. But he had a YouTube channel aimed at children and was a convicted sex offender. Okay. Like where where is the legal area there? I don't know. That's, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, that's too much. So for I think me what's think dangerous about. and why people are really upset. Not this particular video is out of it, but with the rape allegations and the sexual harassment allegations against Sam Pepper, and he continues to be able to have a platform to reach and directly talk to young girls is really bad. But unfortunately, we can't do anything about it. You don't know that. What can we do? But we don't know. But that statement, we don't know it's true. What? We can't do anything about it. What should we, we do or YouTube, what can we but do? I'm, but we can speculate all day long. But the point is we don't know. Mm. We don't know what YouTube's capable of. Mm. We just don't. We don't know what they can find in the law that allows them to do certain things. You know, we just don't know. Mm. It doesn't look good because it seems like it'd be infringing on our rights, but we don't know. I think it's really important to remember that we just don't know. Mm. I just think that it's scary that he will always have access Absolutely. to young it's girls. Absolutely. It's fucking – it's not as scary. It's as just – he has access to social media. It's just you sad. Can't take it's, away someone's ability to use social media unless they're in jail. No, it's sad, okay? But, you know, I don't know. I, I think the speculating on what what can be done mm-hmm. – is, is just a little useless. I think talking about what we think should be done realistically. Well, what do you – okay. So in a perfect world, what do you think should be done? After. I like the suspension. I like having him suspended from YouTube for an extended amount of time. Is it is he getting suspended for this particular video or as a body of his work? You have to believe that after the sexual harassment prank video, he had a talking to from YouTube. Well, I know that he got dropped from his network. Okay, so you have to believe someone from YouTube spoke with Sam Pepper or his people saying, hey, we can't tell you what to do. We can't, you know, we have, you have your rights, but don't do that again. Don't, you know, don't fucking do that shit. Mm -hmm. They must have had some capacity of that talk with Sam Pepper. I don't, I mean, I just, I view YouTube as a solid, you know, well-oiled machine that, you know, does things right for the most part. I mean, obviously, I don't know a lot, but just looking at it, you'd think that that had to happen. So let's just say that happened. Let's just say he got a nice stern slap on the wrist after that video. This video happens from YouTube. I say, okay, we had that talk and you went and you put it in our face and you made this video and it's upset a lot of people. It's hurting our brand. You are now suspended for a year. I, I mean, I'm not saying I know the law. I'm not saying that's legal or anything. I just think that that is, you know, the punishment sort of fits the crime in a sense. You know, it's it's something. And it seems to me that that's the most realistic punishment that could be dished out at this moment. So you're saying from YouTube's perspective, they don't like what he does two times in a row and he gets his channel banned. And so is this according to the petitions that were signed or is this just according to people at YouTube not liking his content? No, this is babe, YouTube not liking its content. This is the people at YouTube looking at what has the reaction of the world. 
Like it's it's not about opinions anymore. It's about seeing what happens. So by that logic, though, then is Nicole Arbor banned from YouTube as well? No, it was it was different. It was very different. The ISIS thing, babe. It's it's just that's that's what's doing it for me. It's like you're saying if I'm YouTube, what do I do? That's what I would do. Nicole Arbor was offensive. She was. Right, but she, she was I wrong. Think on I mean, the same on the same scale, she got people riled up just as absolutely, much. absolutely. But you know what? She was trying to do that. Right, and but I, I don't think Sam Pepper was also. Trying I don't to think do he that. was trying to do. I don't think he. I don't. This particular yeah, prank. no. This, but this scale, he might have been trying to play the bad guy, but he did not expect this type of outlash. Right, he just but, did because well, he's done like saw pranks. Like, yeah, he's no, he tried to kill his friends in the past. Yeah, no, he's fucked. Like he's in fucked up brain, to do these was, stupid pranks. Like in his brain, this was mild in terms of what he has done or no, is willing no, it's, to do. Yeah. I think he's not ready for the backlash. But if you're if you're YouTube though, and you decide that this is disgusting content, why do you ban Sam Pepper and not Roman Atwood? Okay, can we take a quick second to do the sponsors and yeah, we'll sure, come back sir, to it? Sure. Um, this is no. This is a good discussion, and I'm happy we're having it. Yeah. It's just one of those that it's like, what do you do? Like, there's what? no clever segue. There, there's, a, there's just I'm not going to do a segue. It's not appropriate. But there's there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of like you know hope or any any positive that can come out of a discussion like this. It's just kind of like just talking about it and learning you know, as we go. Anyway, uh, this week's sponsor texture is. Um, this is one of those things that in in a few years. Ma- magazines won't exist. I believe that they're completely old right now and Texture is going to put them out. Texture is, it's an app on your phone. Okay. It's, you go on website on your devices, on your tablets and your phones and you pay a subscription for hundreds and hundreds of magazines. And these are magazines that you have at your fingertips. Uh, not only do you just pick out what magazine you like, you know, say you like men, fi- men's fitness, whatever. You, you, not only that, but the magazines you read will, you know, trigger them to curate different magazines that you might like. So already you have what you want, but then they're suggesting things that you also might like that you would have never picked up in a magazine stand. Yeah. Uh, you're at the airport, you're in a rush, you don't need to stop and buy a $10 magazine. You have it already paid for by your monthly subscription yeah. on Texture. Or imagine if you like own a salon or you run a scenario oh, where people it's are... brilliant. You get an iPad for the customer. Office, oct- a doctor's office, you buy... One iPad, you leave it in there, you let your clients yeah. just sit and, and there and hang out with absolutely. every magazine they can. I mean, think with. of that. That's the future. No right? more magazine subscription. And not not to mention, this is uh, incredibly green. You're getting rid of all those magazines. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, texture.com slash Jenna Julian gives you your free trial. You, you can go check it out, see how you like it. Uh, I've tried it, it's great. Uh, I think you will like it too. Uh, Me Undies. Uh, okay, so me undies we've had sponsored before. They make some of the softest material you can ever put on your body. It's called <laughs> micromodal fabric, and I know that doesn't sound sexy, but it, it is, is incredibly sexy. It, is. <laughs> it feels incredibly sexy, and they just released their new boxer line, which is just like wearing nothing except better because you're wearing me undies. Uh, they nothing. have plenty of different awesome designs, colors, styles to choose from. Uh, and like I said, if you like your MeUndies order by Christmas, you order by December 13th and you will get it by Christmas. They guarantee that. Also, if you are not happy, they will return it and uh, they will give you a full refund, which is awesome. MeUndies are great people. Um, one more thing. If you live in the U.S. or Canada, you get free shipping, which is awesome. So if you've never had MeUndies, mm-hmm. you can try it and you get 20% off your first order. Trust me, these are not your mom and dad's stocking stuffers. These are dope. Um Check it out at MeUndies. That's MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian uh, and see all the cool stuff that they have there. You will not be disappointed. Yeah. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. <laughs> For standing by us even when we do hypothetical podcasts about what could happen or what should happen. They believe in us. They do. They I appreciate in us. that. And they believe in freedom of speech. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, that's why I'm very thankful that I, you know, people have fought and died for your ability to speak your mind. And it's something I hold near and dear, which is why I will always play devil's advocate, regardless of how much I am not a huge fan of the video that Sam uploaded or some of the things that he does. I do believe that he should have the right to say what he wants and create what he wants. I think it's important to have that mindset because a lot of people forget that in times like this. They get up in arms and then nothing matters and they just, you know, they don't think about the implications of, 
human rights and stuff like that. Mm. Um, he did get threatened by a anonymous yeah Twitter it account. seems like keemstar debunked that yeah that was the first thing that i did did so you we, check an update yeah. no, on that let me check, check i'll check it right now but so last night around 10 o'clock um we had read that anonymous was threatening sam pepper that if he didn't take the video down that they were going to unleash quote fucking hell on him um but i had gone to the twitter account it's called anon messages right mm. and it wasn't the one that I was following. Like, I, I follow a couple of them that seem to be relatively legit, and I wasn't sure if this was also one, but it was for sure last night the only one that was mention, mentioning anything about Sam Pepper. And then I believe that Keemstar from Drama Alert had reached out to, like, a known anonymous Twitter account, hmm. and they had said, we're not affiliated with that account, and, yeah. you know, anonymous is not going after Sam Pepper because it's not within their interests. Hmm. Um, um, so they're, they're, they've been attacking him. <laughs> You're the, at, at the Anon message on Twitter has been attacking Sam ever since, uh, nine or earlier tonight. Um, what they say, well, they're doing things on? like they hashtagged and Sam Pepper. Um, let's see. Uh, so we found your UK address. We are in the middle of pinpointing your LA address. When are you going to call it quits? Sam Pepper. But seriously though, your sister, um, I'm not sure what that's referencing. It's probably a tweet of Sam Peppers, I think. Um, well, let's not wait till midnight. We're sorry, Sam. No way, we're not. Hashtag prank gone wrong. Hashtag end Sam Pepper. And they, they're they quoting the this address that might be his UK address. Uh, let's see. Um, you, right. the, your countdown is like 15 minutes. <laughs> He's talking to Keemstar. He said, uh, oh, they tweeted out his phone number, apparently. This is alleged. I don't know anything. Mm. And then they said, uh, answer the phone, damn it, at Sam Pepper. So apparently, and then they said, glad you enjoyed the show. More to come. We're just not over. We're not over with you, Sam Pepper. We're just beginning. The world has no place for rapist scum. All right. But we did see on Keemstar's drama alert that that is not an official Anon account. So there could be, that could be just a small sect of current or former Anon. Yeah. uh, That maybe is just kind of going rogue. So we don't know. I'm not sure that anybody deserves that. That, That's kind of a lot. So if you do go to that Twitter account, don't like. These guys, I mean, these guys are. You guys are fine. You guys are dope. Um, Also, you're going to be watching this, what, five, six days after we're recording it. So it might have died down a little by then. There might be new developments by the time you watch this. For sure. Um, yeah. I I had, like, last night when I was very interested in what was going on, I went to Sam Pepper's likes on his Twitter page, and he had liked uh, a tweet from someone that had some, said something along the lines of, you know, YouTubers always preach this whole no bullying thing, and then as soon as Sam Pepper makes a video that they don't like, they're the first ones to... Bully Sam Pepper, I guess, is, is the tweet that he had liked. And I thought that was interesting. I don't think anybody's bullying him. I think the internet might be bullying him. But I don't know of any YouTubers that are bullying him. But even if that was the case, it's an interesting idea to think about in that just because someone makes something that you don't like as a community, we need to find a common ground of how we're going to police ourselves. But you know what does deem bullying or if if all of us are doing it together is that bullying if if we're doing it in a way that's not we don't really know the outcome or might not be 100% constructive is it bullying is you know saying our two cents about what he made is that bullying it's like it's fucking gray area all over the place do you think anybody's bullying him the internet's bullying him i don't know i i don't know I don't really think it's that's great. bullying. That uh, that account is bullying him. You can't. Yeah, you know. but he's bullying the millions of kids who he's earned trust, and he's just shitting on the, his platform. That so many kids who are young, like it's so much responsibility to have that bit fan base, and he's thrown all of it out the window, all of it. Mm. That's bullying, in my opinion. 
you know, if the, if the alleged, all the girls that came tr- through or came forward about him sexually assaulting, if that's true, that's fucking bullying. Mm. That's, put, you know, some could call it rape or sexual assault. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. He, he maybe deserves a little online cyber bullying mm. at the moment right now because of what he fucking did. Bullying someone because they have a different opinion than you or they're different than you is totally different than bullying someone who's bullied millions and fucking ruined people's lives allegedly mm. and really pissed off a whole ton of people you know some some i mean i'm i'm just not gonna like i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i like i fucking don't like the kid i think he is just a perfect example of abusing power and being someone who is so unequipped to have that power and like you know i've seen the kid in person i've I've had one interaction secondhand interaction with him and i hated it and i'm everyone i talk to has had the same experience in it it's 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 one of those things that it gets me fired up because, you know, I know that there's no quick fix and this kid is going to just continue to do what he wants and, and abuse his power until he actually really fucks up, which he can be careful about and not do. So it's one of those things where I'm just like, you know, there's not much to do, you know, at least from I, my that, perspective. It, it's it, like is frustrating. Just, it is disheartening. But I think the, the best thing that we can do, all that we have control over, is whether or not we're paying attention to what he's doing. So, you know, for any parents out there that don't really monitor what their kids do on the Internet, maybe your fucking 12-year-old is a fan of Sam Peppers. Like, just try and pay attention to maybe who they're following and what that person stands for and what they're about. And be responsible for yourself. You know, as much as I didn't want to watch that video because I didn't want it to count as a view for something that, you know, is pretty fucked up. Yeah. I watched it because I, you know, was trying to pay attention to what was going on, as I'm sure a lot of other people did. But, you know, if you don't want to have this conversation with your kid or your teenager or you don't want to have this conversation with anybody that's a a fan of theirs, maybe you should. Maybe you should. And maybe you should pay attention to what your kids are watching. Uh, We as watchers of the Internet should pay attention to what we're watching and making sure that we support people that we think are real and, you know, don't go behind our backs as people that trust them and watch them to, you know, take advantage of young girls or do things that are really messed up because I I don't, I don't know of any other YouTubers that are doing that, that, that go on Twitter and ask for people to send them nudes. I I just don't know people like that. And I, maybe it's, maybe they do exist. I don't know. It's not a stretch of the imagination that there are some, men out there that would love nothing more than a bunch of young girls following them so that they could pester them into meeting up and they I don't know I don't know maybe they Mm -hmm. fucking do exist but I don't know of any and since I know ever since that broke about Sam Pepper I just can't watch his videos I can't justify sitting there and that's doing your part you know like you, you everyone does their part like you were saying you know if a parent just monitor you know if your kid's watching Sam Pepper just be aware be aware of things like that. Right. You know, don't just think it's all good because it's not. Well, There's think shit of, everywhere. Because he does have a solid fan base of people that genuinely enjoy him. Well, because he... Either choose to see around the bullshit or don't really and, get the But there's, there's one thing I want to mention, and it, this is something that scares me more than anything. And it's that it's that young, impressionable part of mm-hmm. his audience. Mm-hmm. The young... That, that feature of the demo that watches the filth that he puts out is like... They will watch this video. They will watch the sexual assault video and be like fucking first to defend him. Like back off Sam Pepper. He's a great guy. He didn't mean like, and they have zero fucking argument. I'm sorry. They have zero argument. Not only do they have zero argument, but they are in zero place as a 13 year old girl to be arguing in such argument. I'm sorry. That's that. But the, the, that's, that's the part where he's abused such like important power. Like, He's won over these kids. And so now everything he does, they will defend and they'll blindly defend it. So now you have kids, hundreds and thousands of kids, probably right now, defending someone who is as tasteless and, you know, made such a disgustingly timed video as Sam Pepper. These kids probably don't know what ISIS is either. Yet they're defending this existence of this video. Like the whole, the whole aspect of young kids defending a creator that they're really passionate about through literally anything is something that terrifies me. It terrifies me because what it is, is it's the person who is allowing that to happen. You know, it's, it's, 
It's, it's just no, so I, it's I, just I, so fucked I up. I, I like don't have words. Unfortunately, there's nothing that you and I can do about that except yeah. encourage people to pay attention to what your younger brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, your children pay attention to what they're watching and you as a person that has the ability to see the whole scope of maybe what is going on in that young person's mind or life just have a talk with them, you know, mm-hmm. try and understand why they might be a fan of someone's because his audience genuinely does really enjoy him and like him. And he is a human being. He is a human being so, and he's not, he's not the worst guy ever to exist. Like he has been but, good in the past and he well, hasn't always been this bad. Like Also, I, I would like to say that this whole, like, you know, if somebody, I'm going to make a vast overgeneralization right now but i have seen on the internet if someone is accusing a guy of like you know doing something completely inappropriate harassing them there is a tendency now on the internet to just start calling them rapists which i don't think is right either and although sam pepper has been accused of rape yeah it's all it's all alleged it's all alleged we all need to remember that's that's important yeah we are we're being court of public opinion he is has not been convicted of a crime, but if you're a parent or an older sister or brother of one of these young girls who clearly is watching him on a regular basis and, you know, enjoying that, maybe yeah. just understand why and maybe just talk to them about yeah. why some of it isn't okay. Yeah, and because, how and how maybe yeah. Right. The best way that you can help these young people that really enjoy him is to get them to think critically and to make their own decisions about what they choose to find entertaining. Fair enough. Why do you find this entertaining? A twelve year old, thirteen year old, those are those are little adults to me. You can have a very deep and thought provoking conversation with a young adult. They know what's going on, they have great thoughts, great opinions, and to know that some of them are taking their really talented special minds and being subjected and finding it enjoyable is those kids need, clearly need someone to just have a conversation with. About it. Why? Why? Do, why are you watching a video of a kid pretending to kill some other kid's best friend? Why? Why is that entertaining to you? What do you like about this kid? Because if they can't give you an answer other than "Oh, I think he's cute," like maybe it's time for you to step in as a parent or a brother or a sister and say, "Listen up, bro. You're not like you're not gonna watch Sam Pepper on my watch, you know, mm-hmm. because they are young girls." He is, you know, contacting them or has in the past. I can't say that he continues to do that, but he has contacted young underage girls in the past, which is problematic. And we as human beings only have control over what our loved ones are consuming and to try and encourage them to make good decisions about what they find entertaining. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Like everyone, you know, everyone, I know there's not... Very many, you know, there's there's an older crowd. They're not like primarily 13 year olds, but there's an older crowd that watches the podcast. So when we, when we say this here, we we know who we're talking to. Right. We're talking to the older brothers, the older sisters, this, you know, the adults who maybe have effect on kids who are that demo. And I, I didn't mean to say that every 13 year old who watches YouTube is an idiot. I didn't like. I'm just saying that. Oh like, no, not at all. No one's there, it there that are way. those. Yeah. I mean, the, fandom is a scary thing, and when it's when it happens. When people like Sam Pepper manipulate audiences who are so easily manipulated, things can get really hairy. That's all I was trying to say. But no, it's it's absolutely important to have an eye on what the people who are young in your life and who you love and who are impressionable are what they're doing online because, um, you know, I, it's nothing like how we grew up. Right. You know, they're on their phone all all day long. They're right. consuming content without and, your right. permission. And so. props to all the parents out there who are doing the best that you can on brothers or sisters. Yeah. Because you can't possibly monitor what that person watches 24-7. It's impossible. But I think if you spend enough time with a young person, you can get a good understanding of what they're into. And what Absolutely. They like I learned so like. much when I talk to kids who watch YouTube. Like, you know, like my stepbrother, like, he, he, like hearing from him. Is like is hearing directly from the people like his age who are young and watch right. videos I make and Jenna makes and like I I'm I need just as much as like I know more than my parents they know more than me right. you know so you learn a lot it's it's important to keep your ears open. In, it in is that I, I've had 
hundreds of conversations with parents being like, you know, I caught my daughter watching your videos and there was some language, but then I realized that like, it really wasn't that bad. Mm. Like, I'm not doing anything horrific. Yeah. yeah I've heard that from angry you before. Know, at least within the last few years, my content has been relatively tame aside from making an occasional drunk video. But even then parents, still tame. parents have told me, you know, I'd rather have uh, my son or daughter watch you while you swear or, you know, you talk about sex or you've gotten drunk on camera. I'd rather have them watch that a million times over than some of the other things on the internet that are really not appropriate for their age. Yeah. And because it, it was a point of insecurity, insecurity for me for a long time that these young kids were watching what I did and I wanted to make sure I wasn't being like a terrible person, yep. but you as a person can't really control who's consuming. What no, you about. can't. You you just have to have a sense of responsibility. That's all it is. Social responsibility. Social responsibility. When you're online, people are watching you. That's what you have to have. Yeah. That's and what Sam Pepper does not have at the current I moment. I wouldn't disagree that he has a level of social re- responsibility that is almost non-existent. Yeah. And I, I think that's scary. I mean, but the, the, you can't control yeah. it. You can't control it's, whether or not Sam Pepper cares that he's reaching these young girls and doing things that are yeah. just sending a bad well, message. Yeah. And you know what? Like we, I would like to see you guys participate in a conversation in the comment section, but I don't want to see you guys get heated and, and attack and everything like that. I know this was kind of an intense podcast mm. and it wasn't a happy go lucky, normal Jen and Julian podcast, but we, we would like to hear your thoughts on, on kind of everything. And if you have something to say, say it. Try as best you can to be respectful. We obviously can't control what you say, but just like we can't control Sam Pepper. But yeah, um, let just, us let us know just, your thoughts. Yeah, about what like we chime in. About. Should there be a punishment if somebody creates something that's and, really and the lawyers the of the Jen and Julian podcast family? Tell yeah. us what we missed. Chime tell us, in. yeah, tell let us, us know where we're wrong or right, or you know, if YouTube or a platform did have the legality, because you know, even Twitter, there are people within ISIS that have Twitter accounts to tweet thousands of times a day. It's, you know, a legal gray area that I'm not a hundred percent familiar with, but you know, what are your thoughts? Um, where does the gray area start and begin for YouTube? If they were to start policing content, um, what should be the ramifications, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and also let me know your thoughts about freedom of speech. And if you think this violates people's freedom of speech, um, and if taking down videos violates people's freedom of speech, yeah. because I think uh, as angry as the Internet is and was and probably will continue to be, what I think is most important to remember is that Sam Pepper is a human being. He is capable. He's of, a U.S. citizen. He's a U.S. citizen. He, or is he? Is he I'm US pretty citizen? sure. Oh, fuck. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even sure. He is capable of growing and changing. Yeah. So you should treat him like a human being. I don't yeah. think it's appropriate to you know, treat him any less than a human being. And we don't know that he's done anything wrong Yeah. as of the current time being. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's, you know, we've defined we, wrong. We, like have, we, we have opinions. The about whole, what but the he's whole, done, the whole sexual know, assault thing. We don't know we if know, any of that's definite. We, we just, know, we, well, you, yeah. If you think about it, like you're in a jury right now, can you convict him? No, I'm no, no. He didn't break sure. the law. He didn't break the law. Right. So I, as what, far as what, we know, what I want though, is that for the people that listen to this podcast and that interact with other people in the future about Sam Pepper is that you don't be the court of public opinion. Don't go on Twitter. Just, you know, calling him a rapist or calling that people solves rapists. nothing. It that solves doesn't do nothing. any constructive. Right. I, you need to think anything. about it critically and honestly. Yeah. You need to help your kids and, and siblings and people think about it critically and honestly. And I think that it's important to remember that just because you don't like something doesn't mean we can violate their liberties in this country. Fair enough. Fair enough. And that as much as, you know, all of these things on the internet make people really upset we those things need to exist so that everyone can have a voice and that's what's so special about this country is that everyone is allowed to have a voice but sometimes it just takes things like this to remind you like oh yeah not everyone's here to play nice and do things that are right there's here to people here people here to fuck shit up and do whatever they want and trample on that but it's what gives you that right to speak your mind hmm yeah, you're right. And maybe next time he uploads a video about murdering his mother, just don't click on it. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. I mean, we, we like you, you, it's important that like, I think your view is important of, of like remembering what our rights are, but I don't necessarily agree with just how, how you've spoken about him in the situation. I just, you know, we, we stand in two different spots, which is fine. We're both, you know, we both don't like it. We both disagree with his choices and, and the timing and everything. We, but I do feel like we are in a little, you know, we're a little different, you know, points in how we think of For sure. what the situation is and how it how it should be handled and what should happen, all, all the all the hypotheticals, you know. Yeah. But I, I would, you know, I think it's important that everyone has their own train of thought. I agree. You know, right? And and. You shouldn't let us sway you but for any reason. If you're a fan of Sam Pepper, I mean, feel free to leave a comment of why you're a fan of Sam Pepper's. Yeah. Like, the, what I think is important about him being a human being is that not all of the content that he uploads is like this. Yeah. I know he, deep down inside, is probably a very nice person. Mm. And I'm, okay, I imagine that for those people that are fans of his, he has done things in the past to, you know, make them feel things or think about things that he means something to them. And whether you like it or not, or whether you agree with it or not, there, there must be reasons why people enjoy him that are not just like, oh, he's really great yeah. at pranks. And I've heard from people who have, you know, had past friendships with him saying there is something in there that is a good guy. Right. You are, you know, you're not wrong about that. Being. There are good qualities. He is not just the worst, but... um yeah, you know, it's it, and like, you know, I'm not the type of person who's going to hate someone forever. I I can hardly hold a grudge for like a week on someone no matter what it is. Like I like peace, I like happiness. So, you know, hopefully some capacity, some small ounce of justice will come down on him right. and then we can it's all move on. Jobs, and yeah, what will happen will happen. We can move on. Yeah, you know can. what I mean? There's no point, you know, years from now to be hating Sam Pepper. It's like he's going to he's going to do what he's going to do. Hopefully, justice will be served in any sort of capacity, but you know, we have to be able to move on from things. Right. And like we we as a community can decide not to work with him. Yeah. We we don't have to publicly trash him or, you know, do any of that business. Yeah. We can just decide that he's not really a part of our community that we're going to put up with or work with. That's what we have control over yeah. and you have control over your, you know, siblings, daughters, children, whatever about what they're consuming and why they're consuming it and their thoughts about it. And that's about it. And the yeah. rest of it, you got to put your hands up and just let Sam Pepper do Sam Pepper, even if it makes you mad. You Absolutely, know? yeah. So, well, thanks for tuning in this Thank week. you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you it's to Texture. It's a Texter. conversation that needed to be had. I haven't heard anybody have this conversation, you know? Like, yeah. Really sort of think about it. No, I'm I'm just talking about it is right. is, is helping, yeah. like, just kind of understand my, my thoughts, my feelings on it, and just the situation overall. Right. So, hopefully you guys gain something from yeah. hearing us talk and about this And hopefully in the future, because he is not the first, and will certainly not be the last in the history of the internet or to YouTube. To offend people the yeah, way he really has. Yeah, to really do some sort of over-the-line yeah. thing. This is going to happen again. And I think that it's going to help us grow and learn as people, as students of the internet, to understand what we should and shouldn't do in reaction, and what we should and shouldn't do to police ourselves in our community. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So For sure. I think it's a good talk and a good thought uh, conversation to have. So for the future, we will be better equipped to handle someone like this when they're, you know. When it happens. Yeah. When yeah. We're doing this. Absolutely. I think that's true. Um, thank you to Texture. Yeah. Make sure you check out Texture. Free trial, guys. You don't have to pay anything. Texture.com slash Jenna Julian. Magazines at your fingertip. Curated, saved for offline reading. It's amazing. Check them out. Also, me undies, me undies. That's M E undies.com slash Jenna Julian. 20% off your first order of the most comfortable underwear yeah, if in you get them, the then world. Be you undies. They will be you undies. They Free shipping in the US undies. and Canada on me undies. Uh, thanks to our sponsors. Thank you to you guys. We really, really love you guys, and we appreciate every every week you tune in. Yeah, thank um, you so much. We will see you guys next week with definitely a happier podcast. <laughs> definitely. For sure. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Oh, no.